Humans share more than 98% of the same DNA with chimpanzees, which is probably why there's always been a fascination with them. What we know of them is mostly because of one woman, whose name has become synonymous with chimps, Jane Goodall. She was launched to fame by National Geographic, whose stories about her life in an African forest with chimpanzees made her an iconic figure. She was the first to discover that wild chimpanzees were capable of making and using tools, a revelation that turned the scientific world upside down, challenging the convention that toolmaking was what made humans unique. Fifty years later, Jane Goodall considers her role now to be more important than ever, which is why we wanted to go back with her to Africa. The story will continue in a moment. There's only one way to get to the Gombe Forest, by boat. And the hills there, you know, which are like a desert now. When I arrived in 1960, in July, uh, those hills were forest. We traveled with her across Lake Tanganyika, the longest lake in the world. And then into the forest which Jane Goodall called home for decades. She first came to Tanzania to this stretch of tropical forest on the remote eastern shores of the lake to study chimpanzees when she was 26 years old. A young girl from England with no scientific training, just a notebook and binoculars. How would you describe what it was like 50 years ago? It was a kind of magical place where I never knew each day what I might see or discover. We followed the forest trails for hours, through the towering trees and tangled vines, searching for Jane Goodall's chimpanzees. Then that unmistakable sound that led us right to them. Look at the little baby. And it's pretty amazing, the entire family. Jane instantly recognized her favorite family. Three generations right there in front of us. She's followed this family for 50 years and gave them the names they're still known by today. What do you love about them? Oh, just everything. <laughs> this is little Google, nearly two years old. He's one of the youngest here. And his mother Gaia, who Jane's known for 17 years. His grandmother is Gremlin. Jane says she's one of the oldest and most gentle chimps in the forest. She's known her since she was born, in 1970. Jane, Jane. Yeah, I can hear. Who's that? Glitter. Twelve-year-old Glitter is little Google's aunt. Today, the chimps are so used to humans, they don't mind getting close. But since it's now known that chimps can catch our infectious diseases, we had to keep a safe distance. When Jane arrived here in 1960, she had the opposite problem. At first, the chimps didn't want to come near you. Yes, first they were afraid, then they became belligerent. And then when I wouldn't go away, well, <laughs> I guess she's okay. They came to trust. That trust allowed Jane to enter the world of these wild animals. And the personal details she spent years documenting today constitute the largest scientific database in the world for this species. It was obvious watching them that they could be happy and sad. And then the communication signals, kissing, embracing, holding hands, patting on the back, shaking the fist, swaggering, uh, throwing rocks, all of these things done in the same context, we do them. How did you see their sense of humor? I've seen a mother laugh when she hears her older child who hasn't paid attention and he hasn't noticed which way she's gone and that the older child is going through the forest whimpering, crying, you know. <laughs> and the mother's up in the tree, quite quiet, and you hear her going, <laughs> just laughing. I mean, it's just... Can you make a greeting? Let me get into the mood of doing the pant grunt of greeting. Yes. Um. <laughs> And a laughing, which is ah, 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 
and can get quite loud. It does sound like laughing. Yeah, it does sound like laughing. It is laughing. We spent 12 hours in the forest with Jane Goodall before we witnessed firsthand what made her so famous. Chimpanzees using sticks as tools to fish for termites. Her discovery was initially received with some skepticism. Some of the scientists thought I'd taught them. <laughs> that would have been quite an achievement, especially as I couldn't get near them back then. It would have been very clever. With the discovery came research funding from the National Geographic Society and fame. In 1960, Miss Jane Goodall arrives in Tanzania. Her discoveries here will startle the scientific world and lead to the possible redefinition of the word man. The films and the, and the magazines took this early footage all around the world, but particularly to the US. It changed everything. It changed everything, yeah. And made you world famous. The chimps made me famous, yes. We watched some of those old films. Oh, that is such a famous shot. It was so amazing. Images that captivated the world. But there was a bit, definitely a bit of beauty in the beast. I mean, I know that. This young girl, and I, I see myself back then, I look at myself and I think, yeah, no wonder the men fell in love. Because... <laughs> look at you, you're barefoot. Yes. <gasps> That's oh, Figgin. What's he doing? Playing. We didn't know back then that chimps caught all our infectious diseases. There wasn't any f feeling of doing anything wrong. It was amazing. It's it was amazing. incredible to be able to have that relationship with wild animals, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. It was Jane Goodall's childhood fascination with animals that brought her to this remote corner of Africa to study them. Did you have a real sense of purpose when you landed on the shores? No, I think I had a real sense of adventure. Did you fall in love with Africa? I was in love with Africa long before I ever went there. When I got there, it felt like coming home. How would you describe the Jane of those days? Very naive, um, shy, very determined, always slightly startled that things were working out. <laughs> <laughs> and like, a terrible flirt. You were a terrible flirt. Oh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> was that? Don't well tell received? me you weren't. <laughs> this is not my story. <laughs> While Jane Goodall's work had a huge impact, it was sometimes undermined by the fact that she had never studied science. Was it hard to be taken seriously by the scientific community? Oh, it, I was not taken very seriously by many of the scientists. Uh, I was known as a geographic cover girl. What did you think of that? Well, I didn't care, at least I didn't think I did. Because, you know, I, I was studying these chimpanzees, and if people thought I did it wrong, well, let them go and do it differently, but let me do it my way. What did you find about them that you didn't like? I hated the fact that they could be very cruel and brutal, uh, and that they have a dark side just like us. Another of Jane Goodall's discoveries, that chimpanzees kill their own species. One more way they resemble humans. These images from the forest show a group attacking another chimp that's wandered onto their territory. Jane says they beat them brutally and leave them to die of their wounds. Did it surprise you that they could be so cruel? It did. I thought they were like us, but nicer. And they're not? No, they're just like us. At times, it was very dangerous for Jane. This chimp, Frodo, was particularly violent and nearly killed her one day. Flipping well came up and dragged me down, stamped on me. Um, it hurt. Uh, he bashed my head onto a rock and it was bleeding. And then he, then he went away and I thought, oh, well, I've survived. And then he came back and did it again. And then he pushed me over the edge. And if there hadn't been some little bushes growing there, I wouldn't be here now, because it was a way big drop. This is Frodo's older brother, Freud. Although he looks menacing, Bill Warlauer, who filmed these pictures, says it's just a show, meant to intimidate. That's somebody. It's a chimp? Yeah. Where? Just through the veg there in the tree. Bill came here to work for the Jane Goodall Institute and lived in the forest for 15 years. 
wild girl's eyes. The Institute carries on Jane's work here through Bill, a team of researchers and scientists who come from all over the world. I mean, don't you get the feeling when you're looking at him and he's looking at you? It's equal minds. That's why you just want to talk to him. You just want to say hi. <laughs> Jane Goodall says she would still be living in the forest, but she had to leave to try to save the chimpanzees. Their numbers have been falling ever since she arrived here, from over a million then to less than 300,000 today. Poaching and loss of habitat have made them an endangered species. At age 76, that keeps Jane Goodall on the road 300 days a year, from the halls of Congress to the stage of a packed rock concert, to a school in Uganda, East Africa. She's constantly raising money and raising awareness. You are so lucky to live near these amazing and wonderful creatures. You should laugh. You should, yeah, that's better. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Protecting chimpanzees is still at the core of Jane Goodall's mission today. She's helped create four sanctuaries, like this one in Uganda for orphan chimpanzees. And she's inspired 15 more across Africa. To get so close to them, we had to be vaccinated. What are the reasons their mothers are killed? Well, sometimes it's bushmeat. Um, there's still some of the live animal trade going on, which means you shoot the mother to take a baby. How urgent is it to save these creatures? Well, if they weren't here, they'd be dead. As much as Jane loves chimpanzees, there's something about her they seem to love. <laughs> is that what a mother chimp would do? No. <laughs> <laughs> Only Mama Jane. <laughs> she liked it. Yes, of course. <laughs> so would a child. They're so like children. Playful. <laughs> Curious mm -hmm. and very one. affectionate. For us, it was a final glimpse into Jane's world, <laughs> the woman who bridged the divide between humans and animals and changed the way we think about them. We're part of the animal kingdom, not separated from it. We could have a blood transfusion from a chimp if you match the blood group. You really could, and the other way around, too. People say to me, thank you for giving them characters and personalities. I said, I didn't give them anything. I merely translated them for people. <laughs>